Hi, I'm Soleil from Monterey Bay, and my life was a nightmare until I turned 15. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to 4Eve. I was born with a condition called macrodontia. That meant my teeth were much larger than normal size. It wasn't a big deal, but people were giving me a hard time for it. Like one time in fourth grade, I was waiting in line for picture day when my teacher, Mrs. Smith, pulled me aside. Sweetie, I need you to keep your mouth closed for the picture. No smiling, okay? You don't want me showing my teeth, do you? It's just that. You're such a pretty girl and your teeth just may be a bit distracting for the picture. It's not my fault you think my teeth are distracting. I have a condition, you witch. Maybe I shouldn't have called Mrs. Smith a witch. It landed me in double detention. But luckily, I told my parents everything that had happened and they were furious. They got my teacher fired for discrimination against a kid and I felt pretty pleased with myself. Though, unfortunately, kids at school started making fun of my teeth after the picture day incident. I ignored them most of the time, but sometimes I just wanted to slap their dumb faces. The only thing that helped me through the day was singing after school in my room. It was my dream to become a singer, but I was way too shy to sing in public. Then one day, everything changed when a new girl came to our class. Her name was Lydia and she was a famous child actress. I'd loved her movies ever since kindergarten. She was literally my idol. We were even paired as lab partners and instantly became friends. I told Lydia all about the bullying and my witch teacher, Mrs. Smith, and she was so sweet. Those people are dumb. You're perfect just the way you are. Just stick by my side and none of the bullies will ever bother you again. Soon I found out Lydia was right. Whenever I was with her, the kids left me alone. I was untouchable. By the time Lydia and I were in eighth grade, we'd become besties. But when we got to high school, things got a little crazy. On our first day, kids started staring and whispering at us in the hallway. Within seconds, everyone pushed past me so they could take selfies with Lydia and ask for her autograph. This went on all morning, and by lunchtime, I decided to study in the library for some peace and quiet. Then suddenly, as I was walking to a table, I tripped over someone's shoe from behind. We both fell forward and I landed on top of some girl. Get off me, you jerk. Jeez, I'm sorry it was an accident. Ugh, please, I know who you are. You're the new bodyguard of that teen actress Lydia. You think you're so important that you don't have to look where you're going. First of all, I don't think that at all. And second, I'm not Lydia's bodyguard. I'm her best friend. <laughs> well, she's telling everyone you're her new bodyguard. If I were you, I'd find out what that's about. The girl got up and stormed off. What was she talking about? I found out later the girl's name was Kara, and everyone was super creeped out by her. Part of it was because she wore black lipstick and dyed her hair white. The other reason was because she just sat in the library all day and never talked to anyone. So I probably shouldn't take anything she said seriously, right? But her comment about me being Lydia's bodyguard was just so weird. So I decided to confront Lydia about it. And when I did, she got really quiet. I have to tell you something. I have a stalker. He's some obsessed fan who's been sending me weird letters that he's gonna kidnap me and we're gonna get married. Ugh, I don't even wanna talk about it. I just really need a bodyguard. Whoa, I had no idea. But wouldn't it be better if you hired some big, tough adult? I mean, I can't fight a weirdo stalker. Soleil, you're my best friend. You're the only person I trust. I don't want some stranger following me around 24-7. Please, I need you to do this for me. Okay, okay, don't worry. I want you to be safe, so I'll be your bodyguard. Lydia was really relieved and I was glad I could protect her. But soon I discovered being her bodyguard was a living hell. Not only did I have to follow Lydia everywhere, I had to shoo away everyone who tried to talk to her. Lydia just didn't trust anyone, but her fans blamed me for it. I just wanted to know where Lydia bought her bracelet. I'm not trying to hurt her, you jerk. Then one day, things got really out of hand. I was walking Lydia down the hall when this muscular jock tried to shove me. <sighs> out of my way, buck teeth. I want to talk to our local movie star, AKA my future girlfriend. Lydia just looked at her phone and I knew that meant she wasn't interested and didn't want to deal with him. Sorry, dude, but Lydia doesn't want to talk to you. And as her bodyguard, I'll have to ask you to leave. At that second, the guy grabbed my shoulder and I had no idea what he was gonna do. I turned to Lydia for help, but I didn't see her anywhere. Instead, some girl pinned the guy's arms behind his back. It was Kara. Leave her alone, psycho. My mom's a cop and can have you locked up, so you never see the light of day again. 
Kara let the guy go and he ran off. I was amazed that she, of all people, had defended me. Wow, Kara, I can't thank you enough for protecting me. I was so scared. Don't get used to it. I just felt bad for you because you're the bodyguard of that stuck-up princess. Notice how she just walked off while you almost got beaten up. Kara walked off and I realized her words made sense. Lydia had abandoned me, and worse, when I kept calling and texting her, she didn't answer. The same day at school, I saw Kara walking into the auditorium, which was empty. This girl was so mysterious. I followed her inside, and seeing her, my jaw dropped. She was playing the piano, and she was incredible. Holy crud, you're a pianist? I didn't mean to sneak up on you, please don't punch me. But you're really good, dude. Ugh, you again. Yeah, I play the piano, but I'm not that good. I mean, I kinda am, but I could never play in front of other people. I totally get what you're saying. I've always wanted to be a singer, but I've never had the guts to sing in front of anyone. So why not sing something now? Come on, no one's here. And you've heard me play piano. It's only fair. I took a deep breath and started to sing something. And for the first time, I saw Kara smile. You're not bad at all, Soleil. You should try out for the spring showcase. If you do, maybe I'll accompany you. I felt my heart race. Was she serious? At that second, my phone rang and it was Lydia. Girl, where have you been? I've been calling you all day. I am so sorry, but you have to come to the school parking lot. My stalker just showed up. Oh no. I panicked and hung up the phone. Then I ran out of the auditorium, totally forgetting about Kara. When I got to the parking lot, I stopped short when I saw Lydia kissing some guy. Uh, Lydia? What's going on? Where's the stalker? Oh, this is him. I decided in the end I like him, and he's cute. What? Why would you like someone who stalked you and made you feel unsafe? <sighs> he didn't stalk me, stalk me. He's just some guy who hit on me at the mall and I wasn't interested, so I thought he might stalk me. But I took his number anyway in case I wanted to give him a chance. And I did. Are you kidding me? Do you know how exhausted I've been being your bodyguard? Some guy even grabbed me and you left me to make out with some stranger? Well, I thought if I told you the full truth, you wouldn't be my bodyguard. You have no idea what it's like to be me. Having to talk to fans all the time and being a celebrity, you've never even had a real friend before me. It's fine, it's just you have no idea what I've gone through. What the heck? I was too angry to even answer her, so I just stormed off. I couldn't believe Lydia. Maybe it was tough being a celebrity, but did she have any idea what I had gone through? Being bullied my whole life and never having friends? I decided then and there I was done living in Lydia's shadow. I was trying out with Kara for the spring showcase. It was my turn to shine. So the next day, I auditioned with Kara and it went amazingly. The director was blown away by our talent and I had no idea what I'd been so scared of. We were in. Craziest of all, all the other performers were chosen and we got the last spot. But just as we were walking out of the auditorium, I saw Lydia sitting in the back row, and her face was white with rage. How could you do that to me, Soleil? You knew I wanted to sing for the showcase. The directors aren't accepting any more performers now. You never told me you were auditioning. You don't even sing. Of course I sing. And no offense, but you're not meant to be a performer. You need a certain look, and you don't have it. I love you, but someone needs to break it to you. I felt myself boil with rage. Who was she to say I couldn't be a performer? Because of my teeth? Then suddenly, Kara whipped out her phone and held it in front of Lydia's face. A video started playing of a girl screeching. Remember at Grandpa's birthday party when we did karaoke? And you sang like a dying cat? Well, I filmed the video, and if you try to get in our way of performing, I'll post it online. You are so mean, Kara. And for your information, I sing way better now and I'm not gonna let my bestie embarrass herself in front of everyone. With that, Lydia stomped off, and I was so confused. How did she and Kara know each other? And why did Kara say, Grandpa? In case you're wondering, Lydia and I are cousins. You guys may be friends, but I'm the only one who knows she's a two-faced witch. What? You guys are cousins? No, wait, look, I know Lydia can be a little selfish, but she's not a bad person. She totally saved my life in middle school. All the kids were teasing me because of my teeth, and she protected me. Lydia's the only one who's seen me for who I am as a person and not what I look like. Oh, babe, you are just too naive. 
come with me and I'll show you what kind of person Lydia really is. Kara caught my full attention, and I followed her to Lydia's locker. I watched as Kara picked the lock and took out a worn-out journal. This is Lydia's diary. I like reading it for my own personal entertainment. I swear, if people knew how evil she really is, she wouldn't be famous. Look at all this stuff she says about people. I grabbed the diary from Kara, and to my horror, it was filled with nasty comments about every kid at school. And then I saw something that broke my heart. Lydia had cut out pictures of me and colored in my teeth with black marker. On the page, she'd written, I don't know how much longer I can pretend to be this freak's friend, but her loser status makes me feel so much better about myself. Before I could stop myself, I burst into tears. My whole friendship with Lydia had been a lie. Kara put her arm around me. I know it sucks, but at least you know the kind of person she is now. I'll help you get revenge. We'll crush her at the showcase. Thanks, Kara, but I think I just need to be alone right now. I went home and ditched the rest of my classes. I didn't come out of my bedroom for two days and refused to go to school. I was just so depressed and I felt like such an idiot. And then my mom came to my room with some news. Soleil, I know you're suffering right now, but I wanted to tell you something that for sure will cheer you up. What is it? Your dad and I finally saved up the money to get braces. We can finally fix your teeth. Why? Because I'm too ugly for you to look at? Of course not, sweetie. This has nothing to do with looks. It's just better for your jaw if we get this fixed. It'll be easier to brush your teeth and eat and take care of dental hygiene. Mom made a pretty good point. So that week, I let her take me to the orthodontist and I got braces. They were super uncomfortable, but I felt better knowing I was finally gonna take care of my teeth. Then finally, when I was back at school, I spotted Lydia. I hadn't seen her since I'd read her diary. And when she saw me with braces, she <gasps> freaked. OMG, are you crazy? I thought you were proud of how you looked. Yet you got braces, which means you obviously hate yourself. No, I love myself. That's why I got braces for my health. Also, congratulations. You don't have to pretend to be my friend anymore. I made new friends, way better friends. With that, I walked away before she could answer. Kara was waiting for me by my locker. I couldn't believe I'd misjudged her. Maybe she was a freak like me, but she was amazing. That evening, Kara and I had our show and I was super nervous. We had to go back to school at 7 p.m. to get ready. When we got there, crowds of kids were already outside the building. That's when we saw a mob of kids in the courtyard gathered around Lydia yelling at her. They were holding their phones in her face and saying things like, two-faced and sicko. What was going on? That's when I saw Kara laughing in the corner. <laughs> I posted the pages of Lydia's diary all over Instagram. Now everyone knows all the awful things she wrote about them. Whoa, Kara. I know she's a jerk, but isn't that kind of low? Not as low as faking being your best friend for years. And everyone deserves to know the truth about her. Trust me, Soleil. I still felt a little weird about it, but I knew deep down, Kara was right. As we walked on the stage later together, the audience cheered and whistled. Don't be afraid of the decisions you make, because life is all about making choices and learning from them. 